Well, today I thought I would do my devotional from my office, quite a change from what we've been doing. Many of you, because of the COVID, we haven't been coming inside as much and you don't even know I've got an office or that I've my office has been changed recently with some different furnishings. I'll show you that. And what I want to show you also is that, well, you'll see it as you go around my office. There's some shelves and a window. I do have a window, my computer, and you see a map on the wall because I love maps. That's a world map right there on my wall. And then back here, you might have noticed on the way by that I have globes. I have four globes here. I have a couple more at home. I love globes. And uh, you can even see I have a here. I'll show you my real little one. I even have this little tiny one, different types. This globe here, this one is a, a antique one. And it's actually made of, of paper um, on the outside and not vinyl. So that's kind of old fashioned. And my sister got that for me. You guys know her, she likes antiques, and I wanted one, so she found me one, I love it. So, um, I was wondering why I like maps. As I looked at this this week and thought about doing it, I thought, why do I like maps? I know I like them, I know I like maps and globes, but why? What makes a person like them? And you know, the only thing I could think of is when I was young, we used to go on trips, and we'd use the Auto Club Triptych, and I think that's the first I remember liking maps. And we could, they'd give you a flipping a page, some of you might remember that. You flip one page just for each section, and I used to like to follow that and guess how long it would take us to get to the next uh, flip of the pages. And uh, we'd plan out our trip, and it was fun, and I just like maps. Um, when I went to Indonesia, okay, so I had another office there, I had an office to furnish. And uh, I, I, I brought, even before I left, and I'll show you what I brought. I brought a globe, you can hear the pieces, a globe puzzle. Look at that. And I made it when I got over there and I had it in my office so I could have a globe because of course I couldn't fit one in my suitcase. In fact, I would love to have this in my office if somebody wants to volunteer to make the puzzle and uh, then I'll have it displayed in my office again. But I liked it. I knew I'd like it. So I went into a store in Indonesia and I said, you know, I can get a world map and I'll put it on my office wall and I'll have a map that I like and I'll be able to use that to learn how they say the different countries. America to them, the United States of America, America, they say like that, but if it's United States, it's AS, which um, is the states of America. And like England is in Greece and different, just a little bit different ways they say them. And I thought, oh, that'll help me. So I bought the map. It wasn't expensive there. And I took it home and I opened it up and I went, well, let me show you. I found one somewhat like the one I had, and so I'm going to show it to you here. I know it's not going to, you're not going to be able to read it. And this is uh, similar to the map I picked up at the store. You see that? And I looked at it, and I went, what is wrong with that map? I, I thought I got a world map, and it said it was. Dunia is the world, and, world, and it said it was a world map. And I looked, and you know, how did the United States, how did America get on the right? I couldn't figure it out at first. And I looked at it and in a while and I realized, you know what, it is a world map. It's just got Southeast Asia and where I was, Indonesia, it's got that in the middle instead of what we're used to. What I was used to in school, now I know this one on my wall is more modern, but in college, I mean in uh, elementary and high school, this is more the map we had on our walls. Do you remember that? In this map, Asia is split. Do you see that? You know what the difference was? This map I bought in Indonesia had Southeast Asia in the center. And this one that I grew up with has America in the center. And the one on the wall is a little bit more not America in the center, but you'll notice it has Europe. This is a Europe-centric map, which is kind of what's become standard. Here's this, this is interesting to me. In this week, I've been thinking about the fact that this is how, kind of how we live. Our worldview tends to put ourselves in the center of it. We see our world as revolving or centered on us. As a nation, as map makers, they know Americans want to see America in the middle. Um, 
well, why wouldn't the people of Southeast Asia and Asia and the Pacific area, why wouldn't they want to see themselves in the middle? Even as I was looking for these maps, I read someone had posted this map of with America in the center and Asia split. It says, ever felt so much like it's all about you that you cut Asia in half? Well, that's how we've done it because we see our world as centered on us. us. And boy, you know what? That's not God's worldview. What does God think? God has a totally different worldview. And I believe he's calling us to a different worldview, to his. Our first reaction, we say, we, we don't, it's not all about us. Remember, we need to have God's view. And we might say, oh, you're right, you're right. The world isn't all about me. It's all about others. You know, the greater good. No, that isn't God's view either. And that may sound very good to the humanist world we live in. And we do live in a humanist culture and world. But that isn't what God's view calls us to. Let me read what Paul wrote about God's view. This is in Colossians 1, 16 to 20. For by him, and it's referring to Christ Jesus, okay? By him, Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In him, not in us, all things, not in the greater good, all things hold together in him. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Christ is the center of the world. God's world, world view is that Jesus Christ is the center of the world. Not only the world and the universe, but the universe we know and the universe we can't even imagine. We have no knowledge or even imagination of. It's all about him. It's not about us. If we truly embrace this worldview, because it is the true reality, God defines reality of all existence, then we must live differently than all the world around us who embraces a very different worldview. We can see right now their worldviews are vastly different, but they're not. The ones that we're hearing about are not the God's worldview. We need to embrace his worldview. You know, Galatians 2.20, Paul wrote this. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Think about it. What does it really mean to live by faith in the Son of God and not to be ourselves, to crucify ourselves, but to live through Christ Jesus, Christ living in us? What does it mean to live like that? Briefly, it means we live in a in obedience, not only to his will, but to his preference. We find out what God prefers and loves, and we embrace that. We make our decisions, all our decisions, based on how he would choose, because he's the center of the world. He's our universe. He's everything to us. He, we show uh, the world around us by how we live that Christ is the center of our world. Are we doing that? Something to think about today. Let's let our globes and our maps remind us that we need to live with God's worldview and be grateful that even today, with all its unrest and trouble, and it's all around us, isn't it? Our world is held in the hand of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Let everything remind us of this. It's in His and it's in His hands. And it's all about him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you hold us in your hands, not only the world, but each one of us, and that it's all about you. We can trust you. We can't trust anything else that, that the world might look to as its center. Help us, Lord, to be centered on you, to live our life by faith in you. Show us how to do that more every day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.